Hello and welcome to another episode here on the War of the Rebellion channel. Today we are going to start a new series where we are going to explore material I covered in my book Liberty and Slavery published by Alice U Press. In the series we are going to look at a number of individuals, migrants from Austria, Hungary, Poland, Germany and Ireland and how they experienced European revolutionary events, how they came to the United States and witnessed the war of the rebellion and in a few cases also what they did after the war of the rebellion. Born November 3rd, 1815, John Mitchell grew up in the family of a Presbyterian minister in Ireland. His family held views in line with Wolf Tone, the Irish hero of the late 1700s who had tried to bring about Irish independence. In 1836, John Mitchell graduated from Trinity College and tried himself in a couple of different professions. Like many young men of intellectual upbringing during this period, John Mitchell joined the Young Ireland movement, which included Protestants. He wrote for the Irish nationalist newspaper The Nation. Unfortunately, many of its articles were extremely incinerary called for violence in his articles. He suggested that Irishmen should use farm tools to arm themselves against the British, that they should fight, instructed them on the construction of barricades. For the nation he was too radical, and they kicked him out. As a result, Mitchell decided to create his own newspaper, The United Irishman in which he published additional calls to arms, embraced his violent language without filter from an editor. On the radar of the British authorities, John Mitchell became a target of the British. Parliament passed initially the Treason Felony Act in May 1848. This act broadened the legal interpretation would constitute a treason. And in May of 1848, the British authorities charged John Mitchell with treason. While he used his trial to attack Great Britain, the British authorities and governance of Ireland, especially in light of the growing humanitarian crisis of the potato famine, he was convicted to transportation. The authorities initially dispatched him to Bermuda, where he resided in what he called a dock house on board an old navy hall. Climate was bad, health condition deteriorated, and he eventually has moved first to South Africa and then Tasmania, Van Diem's land as it's called at the time. Many Irish convicts were residing there at the time, so he had a vast community. 
On June 9, 1853, he and a friend rode into Boswell. He walked into the police station, handed back his ticket of leave, and rode out of town before the police officer actually realized what he had just done. He was going to flee his prison and seek exile. Unfortunately, he missed his ship and decided to hide in plain sight on board another ship going to Sydney. And once he escaped British authorities a second time in Sydney, he was on the way to California. But California wasn't to his liking. So he eventually goes to New York to another hero's welcome. If these brief episodes sparked your interest about the individuals covered, please consider not only subscribing and liking this channel, commenting on this episode, but also looking into purchasing my book, Liberty and Slavery, published by LSU Press.